Regression analysis will give you estimates of regression coefficients and statistical tests of whether those coefficients are different from zero in the population. Sometimes, however, it is very useful to be able to test other hypotheses. For example, if a coefficient differs from a value other than zero or if two coefficients are the same in the population. To do that, we need to understand how we test line linear hypotheses after regression analysis. So let's take an example of a regression on prestige on education, women and type of the occupation using the prestige data that we have been using before. So we get some regression estimates and we will be focusing on these dummy variables. So the effects of professional and white color here tell what is the difference between or expected difference between professional occupations and blue color occupations and white color occupations and blue color occupations. So the regression coefficients here are differences related to a reference category which is the blue color. However, sometimes knowing the difference between the, the categories and a reference category is not enough. What if we wanted to know what's the difference between professional and white color and is that statistically significant? The difference between professional and white color occupations is simply the sum of these two estimates. So it's about 10. But is that difference statistically significant? So we need to get a p-value. We can see that the p-value for professionals is about minus 0.08 for an estimate of 7. And based on that, considering that the difference between professionals and blue colors is 10, we could conclude that maybe the difference of 10 is significant when difference of 7 is close to significant. However, we need to do a proper test to assess whether that's the case. To do that, we would use the Wald test. And here, the Wald test, the null hypothesis that I have in mind is that the type professionals coefficient is the same as the type white color. To calculate the Wald test, we have to um, take an estimate squared divide it by standard error squared. So how do we do that? We have to define what is the estimate here and what is the standard error here. To define the estimate, we will now write the null hypothesis in a slightly different way. So we'll write it that way. So if type professional equals type white color, then type professional minus type white color equals zero. So we have something here that we compare against zero in the population. So this is our estimate. What is the di estimated difference of type professionals, type white colors, and then uh, we raise it to second power. So that's easy enough. How about the standard error squared? We have to understand what does the standard error quantify? So the standard error quantifies, it's, it's the estimate of the standard deviation of this estimate if we repeat the sample, the same random sample over and over from the same population. So how much uh, this estimate varies because of, of sampling fluctuations. In our case, the, S, the standard error squared is the estimated standard deviation squared and standard deviation squared is the same as variance. So we have estimate squared time divided by the variance of the estimate. So how do we calculate the variance of the estimate? Now we have the estimate which is the type professional minus type white color. We can plug in these numbers. We get about minus 10 and we t raise it to our second power. We get about 100 and then we divide it by the variance of, of that estimate. But how do we do that? We need this kind of equation. So that's the estimate. That's easy enough. And when we have the difference between two variables, type professional and type white color that both vary, then uh, the variance of this difference is the variance of both variables summed minus two times the covariance between two, these two variables. You can check the covariance calculation rule in this Wikipedia link or your favorite regression book will, uh, if it's a good book, will also explain how covariances are calculated. So we know uh, the type professional variation and type white color variation, those are the standard errors. But what's this term here, this uh, covariance between the estimates? We can think of that covariance of, of an estimate, of these two estimates, 
asked what will happen if the blue color occupations that we use as reference category what if the prestige of those is, is a bit lower. So if the blue color occupations prestige is a bit lower it means that both type professional and type white colors which are evaluated against the blue colors pr prestigiousness both increase a bit. So when these are these two observations these two uh, estimates vary in these in over repeated samples then they will also co-vary. So they, they will be correlated in repeated samples most of the time. The variance covariance matrix of the estimates is something that your regression analysis will provide for you. And here is the, uh, the covariance matrix for the estimated for the for the estimates for our example. So square root of this variance here is the standard error. You can verify with your hand calculator and the, co the square root of this variance here is the standard error for type white colors. And here is the covariance between these two estimates. So this is something that your regression analysis software provides for you. You don't have to understand how it's calculated. Then we take the numbers here, we plug them here to this equation and we get an answer of 12.325. We compare that 12.325 against the chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom or we compare them against the proper F distribution because this is our regression analysis and we know the regression analysis how it behaves in small samples. If we didn't we would use the chi-square distribution. So whether you use the F distribution or the chi-square to compare this against depends uh, on the same consideration as whether you would be using z-test or t-test. If you are using statistics that have only been proven in large samples then you use z-test and chi-square. If you use statistics that we know how they behave in small samples then you use a t-test and an f-test. So you don't but you don't have to check that from your statistics book because your computer software will do all this calculation for you. So in R we can just use linear hypothesis and then we specify the hypothesis here the R will calculate the, the test statistics for you 12.325 which is the same we got here manually and it'll give you the proper p-value against the proper f distribution. So this is highly significant difference. This kind of comparison is not only restricted in comparing two, categorical, two categories of a categorical variable. You can also do comparisons of work for example whether they are effects of, of women and education are the same or whether the effects of education is different from let's say five. But the comparing two regression coefficients comes with a big caveat. It only makes sense if those two regression coefficients are quantified two variables that are somehow comparable. So you, you can't really compare number of years of education to share of women. So those are incomparable. In many cases uh, these kind of comparisons don't make much sense. Here because we have a categorical variables variable with different categories they are comparable. So it's, it's these are categories of the same variable. It makes sense to compare. In, in some other scenarios it doesn't. So you really have to think does the comparison make sense before you can do this kind of statistical test. Because your statistical software will do any tests for you. It will not tell you whether the test makes sense. You have to think for yourself. 